Hi, this is John with Chest Freezer Cold Plunge, and today we're going to be working on some other ways to get the tubes, cables, wires into the chest freezer. This particular experiment is going to work if you have a chest freezer that does not have a temporary lining or removable liner. We're going to use a piece of EPDM. Some of the tools that we're going to use for this job will include a router, a piece of uh, Plexiglass, uh, if you are using an ozone generator, you will need to use Lexan or uh, polycarbonate. And the reason for that is because uh, this is compatible with ozone. Ozone will not deteriorate polycarbonate, whereas it will deteriorate the acrylic. The idea is that we are going to uh, put a groove into the plastic trim of the chest freezer towards the back. Take two pieces of that EPDM and put a small a groove in there for these various tubes and cables to run through. So uh, we've got our ozone tube, we have the power cord for the pump that we're gonna be using, and then there is the sensor wire for the temperature controller. One very important reminder, if you're already in woodworking, you know this, but uh, before you adjust the router bit, Always, 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 always make sure to unplug it from the power so you keep your fingers safe and intact. One thing to do before you begin is you need to figure out the distance from the base of the router to the outside edge of the blade or the inside edge of the blade depending upon where you're going to put your jig. So in this case, uh, since the router is going to be here, I need to measure to the outside edge of that blade and I essentially came up with two inches here. So I'm going to go ahead and position the jig in the right place for this router to start in the right place. I do want you to know that in an ideal world, uh, you would make multiple passes with the router instead of just going to the uh, this level of depth. You would probably make two or maybe even three passes to do just a little bit at a time. However, since uh, I don't have a way to very precisely adjust this, I'm worried about that final um, you know, uh, level of the depth of the groove being inconsistent. So I'm going to do something that's not really recommended, which is just to make one pass. I'm just going to go really slow and we're just going to hope for the best and see what happens. So now we've got this thing very securely in place. It's not going anywhere. After that first attempt at routing through the metal, I think it's going to be a really bad idea to do that. There was a lot of smoke and a lot of sparks, and you can see where this started to burn the foam. It actually melted it in such a, and it cracked that plastic there. I'm just concerned about that becoming a problem. So what I'm going to do is take a hacksaw, and I'm just going to uh, saw into the depth that I need for the outside piece of metal, and uh, we're just going to. Uh, make a break, score that metal, and just bend that over and remove that, and then we'll route just through the foam and the trim. So what I'm going to do is just measure down five-eighths of an inch. So there's our half-inch mark. There's five-eighths of an inch. And I'm just going to mark this here. All right. We've got this nice jig. We might as well use it to kind of keep our lines square. There's probably a better way to do this, or if you have a uh, metal cutting tool, that would certainly be a, a great thing to do. But I'm just going to start by scoring a line. Oh, I scored right over the line that I need to cut. And this outer wall is actually a lot tougher than the inner wall. Again, there are metal cutting tools for this, which I do not have. And if you have the right kind of tools, or if you have a better plan or more knowledge of do it yourself or construction projects than what I do, there's probably a much easier way to do this. 
So I realized that I actually do have a cutting tool. I have a Dremel, and I completely forgot about that. So I'm going to use this cutting tool to just cut that piece of metal and cut off the top edge of that plastic trim. Let me show you here. And I, I think that'll be a lot easier way to do this than uh, trying to wrap through the metal. I think it might be a safer way. So I'm going to experiment with that, and we'll find out what happens. So I've got my safety gear on, and uh, I'm just going to see if by hand I can make a nice clean cut across here and then across the top part here. So I've got the Dremel on the highest, I'll put it on the highest speed possible. Much better than the router. So watch out for the spark. I think it's a much better way to do it than using the router, and uh, I think it's going to be a lot safer. So I'm going to use the Dremel tool to cut that metal off. And then we'll use the router to create the nice clean, clean groove on the inside. But I'm going to go ahead and remove this piece here so that uh, you know, we can get that metal out of there. And we're just going to use a, a small screwdriver to see if we can pry the metal off. So yeah, that uh, that uh, uh, the Dremel tool actually melted the uh, plastic on there. Oh yeah, see, and this that, that part is actually metal in there too. That's interesting how that affected. metal gets glued to the foam that's in there. And it looks like there might even be a little more of a glued to the top of that uh, trim that's there. It's not just coming right off. Again, we don't need to worry about making this too pretty at this point. Um, what I want to avoid, uh, I see also this is this is causing this to crack. So I'm going to pull, so this is this is all great stuff to learn before going at the actual chest freezer that uh, we're going to be doing this with because you can make the mistakes now and avoid avoid the mistakes on the final build. Okay. So now we've got that whole piece of metal just uh, completely removed. Also important to make sure that you keep the base of the router flush onto the trim. Make sure it gives you a nice clean level cut. So what I've noticed is that uh, my little jig is not completely square, but it's square enough. You know, that outside hole is fine. So what we're gonna do is just move it over a little bit and come down. And then repeat. It's always good to make a, uh, a double pass with the router so you can make sure that you, uh, and we can only, and we, we can go halfway on the router. You don't have to use the full bit for these other, for these subsequent cuts, the grooves, and that also helps a little bit.
these are their chest piece that we're going to be using. This piece is actually tall enough, so we're not going to be routing into this smaller piece here. So it's important for you to double check, and I didn't double check that, but for you, you want to double check that to make sure that you're not actually cutting into this piece. You really want to, only want to create that groove through here. All right, our experiment for today is to see if we can use this small handsaw to cut horizontally through the wall. So rather than having to use a router to groove, uh, to create a groove all the way through there, which is a bit tricky, um, if we can manage to get that cut going this way, um, that would be extremely helpful. This handsaw will work. I think that's gonna that's gonna serve. So see, that just comes right off. So it would have been better to go ahead and cut all the way through, but uh, again, this, this foam is not very structurally stable, not very strong. Now, if you get any holes in there, maybe that's something that could be filled in with uh, a tiny bit of foam spray. That stuff is hard to, uh, that stuff is difficult to uh, get it to where ex exactly you need it. It expands and contracts. We're going to double check the width of this opening, two and three eighths inches. That's pretty close. It might be a hair, boy, just a, I mean, so small of a fraction of an inch. So uh, we might cut the uh, EPDM foam just a little bit wide because of that. And then we're also going to double check the uh, measurement there. That's all right. So we're going to come down two and a half inches. There's two and a half. I'm gonna make a line here, two and a half inches there, and then we're gonna come over two and three eighths. The carpenter square again here to help sure, ensure that's a nice clean line. And then we're just gonna start by lightly scoring this piece. And if you want to clamp this down, you'll probably get a, it might even be easier to prevent it from moving. Okay, so yeah, this stuff easily breaks. <laughs> So we did get a little bit of a, a piece that's broken off there. So that's something to be mindful about. So we're gonna take this piece, I'm gonna come over here and see if it fits. So in this case, um, when I'm thinking here, on the on the Frigidaire chest freezer that we're going to be using, uh, Again, we're not going to be coming down all the way onto this outer trim here because this piece is thicker than it is on this sample one here. So I'm thinking for this, uh, you know, we would just cut this so that it's only covering the foam piece here. And then what you could do on, so again, this is, I haven't done this before. We're completely just making this up as we go along. So what I think would be best here is to cut it so that it's just even with the foam on the inside and the outside and then just use an epoxy putty to close all of that up. And then what you would do, okay, so this chest freezer has been the recipient of a lot of experimentation, but we have our piece of uh, acrylic plexiglass there, and then this piece of EPDM will go in here for the bottom. It might be a smidge wide, and that will be our top piece. Now, the idea is that once we have both of those in there and we've got the cable stuffed in, that this should be flush with the top so that it closes correctly. All right, so our ozone tube was 5 16ths of an inch wide, or, or in diameter. And so what I'm gonna to try to do is, uh, I've set this rounded router bit at 2 and a half sixteenths of an inch. So I'm gonna to attempt to route through this and see what happens.
Okay, it actually created a very clean and straight hole. I really like that. So, what I'm gonna do is put that through there. Yeah, that's almost exactly half of our ozone tube. Beautiful. So, uh, the thing to do would be to get another piece of this. I should have cut it in half and had two of them. I'm gonna go ahead and cut a second groove in here and then just cut these pieces to see if they'll match perfectly. so much about this one lining up with the actual groove that's in the chest freezer. I just want to make sure that these two pieces with the, these two grooves will line up nicely over the ozone tube. So once we get those pieces cinched down, I mean it's not the exact tightest fit in the world you could find, but boy that sure is that sure is really nice. The other option that we're going to play around with is using this one inch thick piece of EPDM foam. I wish I could get this a little less thick, but um, anyway, uh, we're using this and we're going to try to drill holes for our cables and tubes in there. So this is nice and spongy. It's a lot softer. It's a lot more pliable than that other EPDM rubber that I received. So um, what I'm going to do is place a couple of two by fours on either side of this to support and keep it from moving. I'm going to clamp those in place. I don't have a drill press, so I'm going to do the best I can to remain 90 degrees perpendicular to this, and we'll see what happens. All right. Now we're going to drill the next quarter inch hole. This will be for the power cord. And the power cord that I have is round. If yours is a flat power cord, you'll need to try something different, which will be to drill a very small hole and then uh, use a very thin saw to cut out a rectangular shape. Um, I'll, I'll go over that in another video, but uh, we'll drill the second hole. think that went all the way through. It did not go all the way through. So we'll need to, and you want to get them aligned as much as you can. Uh, center, have the uh, center of the circle. Now for the eighth inch hole that we're going to drill for the wire for the temperature controller, and this is for an Aqualogic, the bit that is that comes with a normal bit set is too short. So I went down and bought this longer bit at the hardware store. It's a six inch bit, and this will get us exactly where we need to go. So I'm gonna drill this hole with the eight inch bit, and uh, we'll see how closely lined up we are. I'm gonna come down just a little bit further. So again, you wanna make sure that you're uh, as perpendicular as you possibly can be to the foam that's in there. Just gonna make sure this is lined up, you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, so now we have the three holes. So what's next for this? What we're going to do is cut this piece of foam, uh, but before we do that, um, we're going to cut it in half this way. And I'm not going to cut it in half all the way through uh, because I want to have some bit of connection here. I'm only going to cut, cut it in half from here to here. And the reason I'm doing that is because the power cord has a big plug on the end. And while the wire itself will fit through here, the plug will not. Why I'm going to cut it in half through here is that the temperature controller has a sensor on the end that's wider than this hole. So I also uh, want to be able to fit that through here. Now one thing that I did notice that's going to be a little tricky, I don't know if you can see this on here, but um, the holes on here line up pretty well. 
but on the bottom side it looks like my uh, drilling was a little off so I didn't get it at a really perfect angle uh, to be able to just cut right through here so um, I'm gonna just cut it and see what happens this is probably not going to be ideal in the, the best uh, case scenario we would actually have a drill press to drill make sure this is completely straight through and perpendicular but that it's just going to be a matter of practice and trial and error I've got enough of this foam I can probably do about um, three or four or five of these to uh, to get it right so this seems like it's going to be an okay way to okay saw I think we'll get enough here. There's probably a better way to support that. That didn't turn out completely straight. I'm going to do a, definitely do a better job of that. As a matter of fact, it came really close to that, which I don't want on the bottom. So um, maybe it should have started on the bottom. So this, this one is not going to be ideal. It's very common, of course, in, when you're doing DIY things, for the first one to not really go as planned. And, and that's okay. So we're working it out. So what we're going to do now is cut uh, through this piece. In order to help hold this piece of EPDM in place, I'm going to get a clamp and just place it on here. Now maybe I should probably center it. I don't want to squeeze it too much. So. Uh, and I only need to go down to that uh, middle hole, okay? The ozone tube fits perfectly through that bottom hole, so I don't really need to cut through both of them. So I'm just gonna basically take um, the cut and go just as best I can halfway through the middle, and then we'll see how this works. Right, so now ideally what we will have is a way to insert the power cord as well as the wire for the temperature controller. And I could probably uh, just cut that out a little bit to open that up a little bit. Got it a little wonky. Just probably one little quick cut with a hacksaw and see if we can make this salvageable to get that wire in there. The first thing we're gonna do is have the ozone tube and that will go through the first hole. And we've already figured out that this works just fine. We're just gonna push that through there. Now that will allow us to get the ozone tube in and out of the cold plunge. And then the next thing we're gonna do is make sure there's no debris inside of there. Um, we're gonna take the uh, power cord for the pump. Now this one comes with pigtails. It will be connected to an actual plug. So um, in actual usage, if, you're, if you need to take this thing out for maintenance, you know, it's gonna need to, uh, the plug won't fit through this little hole. So how do we do that? So all you'll have to do is just open this thing up and uh, there you go. We got a really nice, good uh, seal on there for that. And then same thing for the temperature controller sensor. Uh, all we have to do is take this and um, now this is the thicker part of the wire that actually goes into the water. So we're gonna have this part of the wire. I think what I would do in the future is actually place this wire uh, the hole for the wire for the temperature controller a little further uh, away from this one. We'll have all three of these, the wire for the temperature controller, the cord for the power, and the ozone tube uh, through here, and then this little block will just sit into the wall with the trim on the chest freezer. So that's the video. There is still a lot to learn. I've done one actual chest freezer build using this general strategy, and I'll be posting that update and at least the steps that we did in an upcoming video pretty soon. And if you have any comments or questions, feel free to post them below. You can also check out our Facebook group at Chest Freezer Cold Plunge or my website at chestfreezercoldplunge.com. I am available for consulting. I've got an ebook you can purchase. And if you're in the central Texas area, I can also come help you convert your chest freezer if you'd like to have someone do it for you or with you so you can make sure to get it right the first time. So, uh, you can inquire about that. I'm looking forward to hearing about your chest freezer build and the benefits that you're getting from cold water immersion.